Hello, so in this video we are looking at the splayed end roof section of the Advanced Roof Practical. So here's our plan that we've been working on. You'll notice once again we are zoomed in a little bit just so we can get a slightly bigger view on that. Uh, as a result we've lost a little, some of the measurements around the outside but that won't uh, affect us too much. We'll be able to work through these figures. They're all the same figures that we've used in the previous videos. So here are all the rafters that we have already worked out in the previous videos. And here are the four formulas that we're going to be using to work out everything we need in this splayed end. So the first thing we're going to do is look at this rafter here. And what I want you to do is to pause the video and decide what sort of rafter that is. What is that rafter called? All right, hopefully you know that this is a crown end rafter. So once again, crown end rafter is at right angles to the top plate and it comes up into the peak of the hip, just like these crown ends and just like that crown end. Now this crown end we've actually already worked out because just like the other crown ends, it follows the same rules. It has the same run and the same GL of the common rafters that go with it. So we can skip off that. We're now going to have a look at the two hip rafters. Now, the way to work out these hip rafters is the same way we worked out this hip rafter, but a couple of the measurements are going to change. When we did the standard hip end, whatever that run was, it equaled the distance along the top plate. That's not the case down this end. We've got a run along here, but we don't know this distance. So there's a couple of things we need to work out how far back from the corner this common rafter sits and also on this side. So the two measurements we need, we need the distance along the splayed end of the top plate and we need the offset which is how much shorter this point is compared to that point. So if I throw that little triangle is, there's our offset distance and across the rake there is our splayed end distance. So the easiest way to get the offset, we simply look at the measurements along the size of our building. So all the way from that point to that point was uh, two and a half meters. And if we add up these numbers, that gives us this distance from there all the way through to there and all the way through to this point. And we simply minus these two numbers off this number. That leaves us with a distance of a 500 mil offset from there to there. The next thing we're going to look at is this side of this triangle, which we've already worked out. That is the same as our span across there. That gives us a span of 1300 across there. So now we have a triangle, right angle triangle. We know two sides. And I want you to pause the video and decide how you're going to use those two figures to work out what this distance is across here. All right, so hopefully you have decided to use this Pythagoras formula here. So we've got two sides of a right angle triangle, 1300 squared, 500 squared. Use the two of those figures to work out this one. And hopefully you have worked out 1393 across there. So now we have our splayed end measurement and we have our offset measurement. And we're going to use a very easy formula to work out these distances here. Now you'll notice right down the bottom, it's a little bit hidden, but what that says down there is that this distance here equals half of that plus half of that. So if you go 3093 divided by 2, 500 divided by 2, and add them both together, that gives you the distance from that corner to the center of this rafter here at that point. For this distance, we're going to do something very similar. We're going to take half of that and we're going to minus half of this. So half the splayed end minus half the offset equals this distance along here. And half the uh, splayed end plus half the offset equals this distance here. So I want you to run those through your calculator and see what answer you get. All right, so if you've uh, worked out 947 and 447 rounded off to the nearest millimeter then you've got those ones correct so that gives us 
two sides of this triangle. So there's that triangle there. We're working out the run of this hip. So what do we need? We need the run of this rafter along here. So there's our run. There's our distance along the top plate. Square the both of them. That gives us a run of 11.49. To get the GL of that hip, we do the same thing we did for the GL of that hip and the hips over there. We take the GL of that rafter, that distance along the top plate, square the both of them. That gives us 12.09 for the geometric length of this hip. When we come and look at this hip, the whole process is exactly the same using this figure here. So we flick on over. I will get you to pause the video and run those figures through and make sure you end up with these two as your run and your geometric length. So now there is one rafter left to look at and this is this creeper rafter. This is the one that in the previous video I said was a little bit different to this one. Remember this creeper rafter we simply sent one uh, run sorry, of this rafter minus the spacing equals the run of that. We can't do that on this case because that's not a 45 degree hip going into that corner. So what we need to do is look at this triangle down here. Now if we highlight that triangle, like all right angle triangle, we need two things to get a third thing. So we want the run of this rafter. So what do we need? We need the length from there to there which is pretty easy to get. We have from this point to there is 947 and from that point to there is our rafter spacing of 450 which is written down here. So we simply go 947 minus 450 that gives us 497 from there to there. Now we need the angle in here in order to get that. Now we don't have enough information in this triangle to get that angle but we do have enough information in that triangle which is the same angle. We have this distance across here, there's the 650, I've just thrown a, uh, a blue rafter in there for the sake of uh, putting a rafter in. So the run of that is 650. Now we need to use a formula to use 650 and 947 to work out what that angle is in there. And what I'd like you to do is pause the video and see if you can remember which formula to use run the figures through and see what angle you get. All right, so hopefully you came down to this one here. Now you'll notice uh, you should remember from the previous video that it kind of looks like this formula in reverse. We need to find the pitch. So we're going to go rise divided by run inverse tangent. Now you notice this triangle sits on the flat. It's not a vertical triangle, which means technically this is not a rise and that's not a run. But because the information we have is the same as the information in a vertical triangle, we've got the two sides either side of the right angle triangle, we can still use this formula. So for the sake of uh, this calculation, we're going to go 650 divided by 947, which is the equivalent of our rise divided by run. Press the equal sign and then on your calculator it'll be inverse tangent or shift tangent or possibly second function tangent. And if you've done it correctly, you will come up with a angle of 34 and a half degrees, just rounded off to the nearest half a degree in here. Now we can flick back to this triangle in here. We've already worked out at 497. We have our degrees in there. So now we can use those two to figure out this distance across here. Now again, we use our rise. This is the equivalent. If this triangle were sitting vertically, that would be the rise and that would be the run, even though because it's sitting flat, it's not, but it's the same kind of triangle. So we're going to go run times the tangent of the pitch. So if we go 497 times the tangent of 34 and a half degrees, run that through your calculator, see what answer you come up with. All right, hopefully you came up with 341 for the run across this rafter. 
next thing to work out is the geometric length which is worked out exactly the same way we worked out these ones using our GL formula and hopefully you get 394 for the geometric length of that creeper so now we have calculated all of the hip rafters common rafters crown ends and valley rafters in this roof the only thing left are the ridge boards so we've got our major ridge there and our minor ridge there and working these out is actually quite easy we don't need any formulas any trigonometry formulas like that we simply take the length of something like the building that we have along there and we minus off the bits that we don't need so there's a measurement down here you can't see it because we zoomed in a little bit too far but there's a measurement of two meters from that corner all the way to this corner so all we have to do is minus off that little bit which we worked out previously and minus this little bit which we also worked out previously so that is equivalent to the run of that crown in rafter so two meters minus that distance minus that distance leaves us with the ridge measurement along here and we do the same around the corner this distance from that corner all the way down to here is two and a half meters we just minus off that distance which is a run of that and we minus off this distance which we've already worked out there leaves us with the length of that minor ridge so thank you for watching the next video will look at the angles meaning the seat cuts the plum cuts and the edge angles